Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. <laughs> mm. Well, guys, I have my good friend, Versan Algera, Black Swan Capitalist, here with us again this morning. And he has spent the weekend over here with Judy and I, and we have just had a fabulous time. And in fact, we had Vandell and his lady come over and another friend of Versan's come over and stuff like that. And we've just been having a great time and certainly talking about this digital asset space. And what we're gonna bring to you this morning is something that a lot of people have actually don't even know about big time. And on top of that, those that do know have probably left it on the shelf. And this goes back to 2015. And yep. I'm gonna let you take it from here, Versan, and what you have there. Cause I think this is a big deal, guys. Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of documents do seem to resurface every now and then, but just because something's older doesn't mean it's not relevant. In fact, with the way things are playing out in real time today, I think some of these documents are more relevant today. For instance, like the ICE-9 scenario that Jim Rickards talks about, you'll see people saying that this is old, it has no relevance. It has yeah. more relevance now because the debt trap is even tighter, you know? So right, here's an example. <clears throat> but. We have more evidence uh, that shows JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, and many others are actually utilizing Ripple's technology and leveraging the XRP for payments. Now, I'm gonna explore this a little bit, so I am gonna read this document very briefly. So 2015, Deutsche Bank has publicly expressed an intention to explore application for blockchain in payments, transfers of asset ownerships and smart contracts. So that's pretty much everything. <laughs> but all re relevant to trade. Now, several large investment banks, including Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, have recognized this and are supplementing their independent efforts by starting the backup with the R3 Corda. Now, with the intention of developing universal standards for blockchain and financial services. Now, it does say that Swift and Bolero may be better positioned to take advantage of this space owing to their position as third-party entities, casting their net wider in financial services focused on blockchain firms such as Ripple, Ripple Labs, which would also play a major role here. Mm -hmm. And it does even state further that if they do not adopt these new technologies, right. the financial technology and competitors will threaten to shun banks out of the space that they have historically dominated. So we're talking about biggest institutions out there. For yep, instance, yep, JP yep. Morgan has historically dominated the financial landscape right. in traditional banking. Now, it seems if they don't adopt these technologies, they get left behind, but we have more and more evidence that JP Morgan, no doubt, is of course using the best performing technology. Right. So, And I think you know, what's also important, something to point out in, in this as well, is um, four years after this document came out what's very very interesting is the depository trust and clearing corp which of course handles trillions of dollars of transactional volume per day you know in settling trades in a traditional market mm -hmm. well in 2019 they themselves started to utilize blockchain technology for what they wanted as instant settlements no instant settlements for them was you know to go like from three days, business days to, you know, mm -hmm. 30 minutes or whatever, which is pretty instant in comparison to that. Right. Now, what happened was there, they signed up with a company called R3 Corda to yeah. facilitate that. And R3 Corda, we know for a fact, is utilizing XDC, and of course they are heavily involved with XRP, you know, to, to facilitate those transactions, those immediate transactions. That right there tells you a lot because the Deposit Trust and Clearing Corp, it's owned by a lot of these member trading houses. It's not just its own, it's, they all have a, you know, their fingers in the pie, kind of like mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve, where it's member banks. I mean, the names are kind of like, um, you know, they're <clears throat> misnomers really, because we know the Federal Reserve is not even a federal government agency, no. but they have a name to kind of, it, it confuses people, and I think there's intention there. Of course. The Depository Trust, and clearing corp well it's not really a you know it, it is a trust in the sense it's a it, they utilize trust accounts and all this kind of stuff but it's not it's a corporation built up of member entities mm -hmm. and most of them jp morgan and all the rest are heavily involved Absolutely. and so we can see that they have you know turned to this you know um distributed ledger technology mm -hmm for the infrastructure of the backbone of what they're traditionally known to be trading houses 
Well, if they're going to utilize it for that, then you know they're going to utilize it in their monetary systems and everything else. And this is where the tokenization of securities, mm -hmm. I believe, comes into it. Real world asset tokenization is definitely happening. Smart. And, you know, even back in 2015 <clears throat> when this document was created, something else to throw out there is that um, during that time is when a lot of uh, G7 nations were launching their test and pilot projects yep. for CBDCs. That's how far back it goes. So yeah. that's just something What's I also I interesting that. is that that's when Trump was president too. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Trump, I, I put this out on Twitter yesterday, Trump came mm -hmm. out. I think well, it's, he, an, it's I, an older video. I think at 2015, I think Trump was coming in 2016. Right, 2016. Right? But yeah. um, there's this older video while he was president, I put it out yesterday on X, yeah. where he talks about a level playing field. Yeah. And I think what he's referring to is absolutely XRP because XRP does level the playing field. It gives um, everyone to participate in there. And I just thought that was very interesting. No, it so, was. I thought that was a great piece of information yeah. to, to kind of bring out to the community because, you know, so many new people have come into this space literally within the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, new information comes back out and people say, oh, well, this is old news. I've heard it. Well, it's maybe old to you, but it's new to these people that have never heard it. That's right. And, and it has to resurface. And, it, and, and, and plus it's reminding ourselves, hey, what, were, what was the plan, you know, in the first place? What was the roadmap, I, as, as it were? And, there, and have they followed that roadmap? Well, if you go back and take a look at the map, you can pretty much see that they have absolutely have followed that roadmap. And you know, where we're going, and right now where we are today, and you're right, actually in 2019 when the DTCC did that move, yeah, Trump was president because you know he was in, in, the, in office until 2020. And then the so, lawsuit comes shortly after. And then the lawsuit <laughs> on December um, 2020, just as Jay Clayton, the last official act that he did walking out of the SEC's office, that was phenomenal. And of course, guys, we know that we only have, what, 14, 15 days until the deadline of the SEC to file an appeal in this Ripple case. And I'll tell you what, if we wait until like the last week or the last day, you can be almost assured what we're dealing with here is, you know, this is not a faithful allegiance to the law. This is a political maneuver. And that's how I absolutely have viewed this thing practically from day one, because mm -hmm. we can see that, look, here's a corporation that is getting, you know, um, practically in, in, in all intents and purposes, the SEC were going after to destroy the company. Yeah. Like we've seen them do with, you know, other various you know assets in this class and things like that mm -hmm. yeah ripple had big enough pockets deep enough pockets that they could fight this lawsuit while they fought it and they were winning 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 the sec did not expect for that to happen yeah that was not and the expectation and during the time that they were doing it what was ripple doing it was expanding its influence acquiring and its, consolidating yep, and the ecosystem mm -hmm. and making partnerships around the wide world in dubai in australia in singapore in London, in all these various jurisdictions, you would think that that, that that lawsuit would have been their primary and only focus. Well, they're not really, you know, I mean, for what we see demonstrated, they haven't shown like that that was a big worry on their mind. Right, right? but I also think it's interesting that while mm -hmm. that lawsuit was going on, they were, again, expanding, their global reach was everywhere, consolidating, yeah. acquiring assets, yep. acquiring other um, uh, DeFi protocols and yes. other technologies yep. out there Metaco, because it's going to be all solutions. Yeah, interoperable with each other. So my point though is that mm -hmm. while the SEC lawsuit has been going on, the facts and the law has still been on our side. So I think it's yeah. still like, you know, it's a show. It is. Right? It's a dog really and a pony show if there ever was. They're one. just setting the stage. But every time we get closer, mm -hmm. you see that they've just gotten bigger and bigger and unstoppable. Yeah. And it's not like they can really do anything about it. They can't even change the impact on XRP right. itself. That's right. And then also Trump today. Now you're going to see this later on, guys. Um, it's going to keep resurfacing. There's a new video of a, a crypto investor asking Trump yeah. to uh, about you know the role of the crypto industry. Um, and Going he mentioned forward. that we can pay off the global debt, or not the global, the U.S. debt of thirty-five trillion dollars. Yeah. And what did yeah. I say to you this morning? I yeah. said that's going to need a really high XRP price to settle yeah. a transaction like thirty-five that. trillion. Yeah, that and that's a bold statement. But he said, yeah, perhaps we could pay off the thirty-five trillion with crypto. crypto. So what's he referring well, to? Well, what's he exactly? referring to? I think is the fact that we are entering into a brand new financial system, mm -hmm. and the old system is going to be literally done away with. I mean, we know that it is now, of course you know the infrastructure and the legacy system 
you know, they want to have their DNA in the new system. Mm -hmm. But we know for a fact, BlackRock, JP yes. Morgan, Van Eck, you know, got all these major trading houses and this and that, and they are heavily vested in this digital asset space. One thing that I think is absolutely amazing is you see Fortune 500 companies going in and they're paying tens of millions for virtual real estate in the metaverse. Now you're telling me that they don't expect distributed ledger technology to do something? This mm -hmm. is insanity for, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, the whole idea, the FUD that's getting thrown out there. Oh God, don't even get me started. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just, to me, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's nonsense. It's utter, utter nonsense. And I do believe that some people are either willfully participating in this yes. grand deception mm -hmm. or they have to be the complete most ignorant uh and, and when i say ignorant i mean lack of understanding and knowledge about where this space is going it's one or the other it's one or right. the other because you can be both well yeah, i suppose <laughs> there's a possibility of both but you know when you look at some of these people that will their whole online identity is wrapped around the denial of these facts yeah instead it, of like talking about the technology crazy, they're talking crazy. about why right why theirs is dominant or mm. superior and that's that tribalism or, or they spend more or they yeah or they spend more time attacking one that they don't instead agree with right? than than they do t uh, promoting what they what they say they yeah, believe we're in getting themselves. the facts <laughs> yeah getting the facts so that's yeah no this is big this is big and um you know another thing i think is very crucial right now of course is what we were discussing there on saturday with the basis points cut and yes. where we are uh, from in a global economic environment. Now, when we have always been at these teetering points historically, <clears throat> the powers that be, however, whoever you want to kind of throw in there, but I would say a lot of the major money makers around the wide world, which we're talking about central banks. Yes, private you know, entities also. One of the things that they have literally pushed, and we have watched this happen historically, you can research this for yourself, come to your own conclusions, but to me, I think it's fairly clear. They have driven us into global conflict. Mm -hmm. Global conflict because that is one way that they can have every excuse they ever possibly need to keep the printing press going like crazy right. and the reality of central banks is they exist to inflate that's yes. all they can mm -hmm. do the moment that you take away their ability to issue even just one more promissory note and i'm talking about you know our, our cash our currency yeah. then you then, then their purpose ceases to exist yeah the system collapses the system on collapses itself. on itself and augustine carson so he's a general manager of the uh, bank of international settlements and i was listening to him speak one time this is a ways back, but it was really what he had to say. He basically said all these, you know, notes, I don't care, $20 note, $50 note, $100 note that these central banks are issuing. What they really are is liability instruments. Mm -hmm. That is what they really are. What you're talking about when you're printing new money, you're printing new debt. debt. That's right. That is what you have to grasp. And when you're doing that, you know, all that debt, has to come to some level of revolution resolution now we know for a fact that there it's the never ever plan because it can't pay it off mm -hmm. the interest per day is into the billions yeah i think it's billions. a trillion now every what 100 days every right? 100 days yeah. they're printing they're producing another it's and think about think about this from george washington literally i think to ronald reagan that length of time is what it took for the U.S. to accumulate its first $1 trillion in debt. Mm -hmm. So well over 100 years. Yeah. Now in less than 100 days, yeah. you're, <laughs> well, yeah. you're doing that. That's, right. in, that's insane. And, and it's unsustainable, which also brings us to the point that we know this is not working anymore. It's not working for the one percenters either. And I nope. think that's why they're trying to bridge us into this new system. Yep. Now they have to orchestrate it. And probably they're doing this through the escalation of war. And that's what we see happening. Yes, I agree East. with that. Yeah, I don't think East enough people time. are talking about that. But no. what's happening in the Middle East is tying directly into this reset, into what the BRICS nations are trying to accomplish right. as well. And what really is important, too, is the fact that with all this unsustainable debt, we have to look at the gold price. Gold is going to play a major role. In the oh, yeah. Price. I mean, we saw new all-time highs just this weekend. And again, yeah. I wouldn't suspect. And I was reading an article on Zero Hedge this morning where um you know they're talking about it's 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 not it's nowhere near stopping or even mm -hmm. slowing down and the central banks what are they accumulating they're right. accumulating mm -hmm. what would be classified as real 
real assets. Money, real, real, money. Mo yes. real assets, real money, because you know they understand the fiat system is just a is a is a Ponzi scheme if there ever was one. If you and I went out and decided we're going to do one on our own accord and just build a community <laughs> where we're issuing our own currency and we are transacting with one another in this currency and we can print it at will. They'd have us behind bars so fast. Yeah. It would, we wouldn't even know what hit us and for a long, long time. It's amazing. You can see people going to jail for multiple you know, lifetime sentences mm -hmm. for these quote unquote financial right. crimes, but yeah. someone could, you know, do some real damage yeah, to someone bank, else. Bankrupt the whole world yeah. and get away with it. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> insane. And the IMF is behind that. And so. to think that there's people out there that are willfully coming out and saying, oh, how idiotic this is, how stupid it is. It's a now conspiracy. That, yeah. And the very same people that were saying that before, mm -hmm. literally not more than four or five years ago, are now out there literally singing the praises of this digital asset space, including Trump himself. Yes, you yes. know, and so that need you need to pay attention to that. That needs to that should tweak your interest big time. It's not what they say; it's what they haven't said or when they've said it. You know, in the past, why oh why it would right now they be just changing that their mm -hmm. tune. The, the Larry guy, Fink, right? I'll mm -hmm. never forget. I remember listening to him. And how he was saying, there's none of our major global clients are even interested in digital asset. Oh, they're not even interested. Within two, three years, coming out saying, you know, it's going to represent potentially a flight to safety and a collapsing dollar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that has got to be the one of the biggest. And we're talking about, look at all the ETFs that they put out. So Bitcoin, I'm going to throw this out there. Okay. One thing that we get with a Bitcoin, and forgive me, I know I'm, I'm going to give you. The, one of the <laughs> things with these Bitcoin maxis that they've always said is this. Mm. They've always come out and said, well, this is, you know, this is against the current financial institutions, da, 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 and OXRP, it's a banker's coin, and this, and this, and that. Well, I'll tell you what, once these ETFs came into play, mm -hmm. they more or less got under the covers with all these, you know, big yep. bankers, yep. because they control it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you want to call, if you want to say that XRP is not decentralized because, oh, there's only so <laughs> many nodes, well, Ripple number one only only has one or two of them and all the rest of them, but, you know, are, are all distributed around, you know, but needless to say, Bitcoin is as centralized as it it's ever as was. It's as centralized oh, as it can God. be. In fact, yeah. I like, ahead. I like the fact that they tout that it's decentralized when in, it's absolutely not. Yeah. There's so much evidence to confirm this, you know, I believe it's, it. with, with XRP, I think why they're also trying to hide this technology. They're telling people one thing, they're doing something else is yeah. Also, there's enough evidence to support that XRP does not um, follow political bias. So it doesn't have any political bias. Yeah. And I think that's why the institutions are trying to get ahead of this while telling people, selling some some other story, some other narrative out there. So um, getting into something like XRP, I think you have a way to beat the institutions to a degree mm -hmm. at their own game in some sense. I agree with that. Too. So, uh, yeah. No, I think, I think you're mm -hmm. right. I think what we're seeing right now is we are in the middle of a massive global transformation yeah. that we probably as a, you know, most of us, you know, in our, in our lifetimes and even in our parents' lifetimes. So in your case, like that would be your, <laughs> probably your grandparents or great grandparents in some cases for some people, but we haven't seen it. No, there's none of us that in recent memory can really say that we saw a, uh, a monetary transition to the degree that what this is going to be. I mean, this is tantamount to the invention of coin practically. Yeah. This you know, is from no what, doubt the greatest wealth transfer. It really is. Yeah. And I believe going either. on to the blockchain. Yes. Everything's being tokenized, smart contracts yep. and, and right now a lot a of people are being squeezed and crushed. So they don't the, participate. So they don't have the, even the ability to mm -hmm. participate. It's very sad. And you know, like, I, uh, uh, you know, I had a, I was throwing this, throwing this out last week. I had, uh, I had said that, listen, a lot of these people that are saying, oh, there's all these great jobs. Well, no. Truth of the matter is, a lot of people have lost these high paying jobs mm -hmm. to take on, um, you know, two or three of these lesser paying jobs that don't even offer the same level of benefits and no. this and that. Well, I have had people in our community yeah. come into the comments and literally said, hey, listen, I was one of those ones that had the multiple six figure job. Yeah. And, and one of them recently said now. they took four executives and they laid off four executives, big, well known company. And one of them happens to be a subscriber to us. Mm. And he was sharing how, you know, his situation, 
you know, and they had just got into a new home. They had just got into all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, after working there for years, yep. bang, rug just pulled. like that. John, the John market it's is crazy. no security in there. There's no, no security it's not. in the John market. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's very sad. You know, people are being priced out. They're That's being priced out. Yeah, as the transition is occurring, so very few people will be able to participate yep. in this wealth transfer. And I think that's why it's so and important. And having to liquidate their assets to maintain yeah. their current. Mm -hmm. See, what one it's of the biggest simple. traps, guys, is they want you to get to a place where you don't correct your life, your your financial lifestyle, but you try to maintain it. Now, a lot of times people will try to maintain it by first, you know, they'll, they'll get rid of assets, mm -hmm. you know, or they'll turn to the accumulation of more debt, you know, encumbering their, taking equity out of their property, credit cards, all that kind of stuff to maintain the lifestyle rather than consider, hey, I should really go through some momentary, this pain right now, correct my lifestyle in such a big way so that I have the ability either to get out from underneath the boot of this debt or, you know, be able to participate in something that will appreciate to the point where I can use that appreciation yeah. to deliver myself out of this debt. This is where I think strategy and having a solid game plan really matters now, you know, and that's- And that's and, what we teach. Yeah, that's what we teach. And that's, and there is pain involved. Of course there's pain involved because, you know, no one likes those changes. Yeah. And and that kind of stuff. And, it, and it's unfair in that we did not create the environment that has forced us into mm -hmm. these corners. That's right. But if we, if we can see what's coming and we can utilize that knowledge to our benefit, preparing ourselves for the future, we could literally set ourselves up in such a way, I do believe this will represent the greatest wealth yes. transfer in the history of mankind in terms of what we're gonna look like you know, on the, on the other end of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is where I think, yeah. And Judy and I, I mean, I'll tell you what guys, we had sacrificed a lot. That's what I was going to say. That last yeah. go around to get to, to this point. But even now, I mean, wow. I'll tell you what, big time, big time, big time. So that we could position ourselves because of course we have goals and they're for our family, our children, our grandchildren. And remember, it's not only, like I say, the accumulation of wealth, but the preservation of it. So yes. anyhow, guys, yes. I, I want to just say this has just been fantastic. I have enjoyed having you, <laughs> uh, Versan, over here. It's a pleasure. Coming for yeah. the weekend, really helping us out. Guys, you're going to see some changes on the channel uh, coming up relatively soon in the way, you know, with our intros, our outros, our this or that or whatever. And he has been given, Versailles has been giving us some amazing pointers and stuff like that. And just can't wait <laughs> for this community to, you know, be the beneficiaries of a lot of that as well. And we love and appreciate you. And guys, until later on today, when we have an absolute, I have to get my little pin thing here to shut this. <laughs> until later on today, when we have an amazing video for you, have a great one and take care. Have a wonderful day.